The GPU is often the first component to feel outdated. My choice today, the Asus RTX 3080. It was a powerhouse, but in 2025 and looking forward to 2030, can this card really deliver premium gaming performance and stand the test of time for my eight to 10 year build? What's up everyone? It's the Don with the Don Tech. Welcome to part number seven of my eight part review series, where I'm diving deep into every component of my ultimate gaming PC build. If you followed my PC part shopping series up here, you know that I did my research and bought the best, longest lasting parts for my build. And today, we're looking at my GPU. This is the Asus ROG Strix Gaming OC GeForce RTX 3080 with 10 gigs of GDDR6X memory. Whew. Let's see if this card can handle my 1440p gaming needs, streaming needs, recording and rendering needs, all while meeting my extreme demands for quality and reliability. In my PC part shopping series, I needed a GPU that could deliver top tier performance for my 1440p gaming at 100 hertz. It can do streaming and 4K video editing, all while fitting nicely into my Fantex NV7 case. My build also has an Intel Core Ultra 7 265K on an ASUS ROG Strix Z890E motherboard, 96 gigs of DDR5 RAM, and a Samsung 990 Pro 4 terabyte NVMe drive. It demands a lot of power and efficiency. So I went with the RTX 3080 because of its Ampere architecture, which offers a massive leap over my previous 1080 Ti, thanks to improved ray tracing and DLSS. It's also got faster GDDR6 memory, and it also is something that is less power requiring to an extent, more on that later, possibly. I also ended up getting this card for absolutely free from a buddy who was upgrading, win-win. So this ROG Street Strix card features robust cooling and premium build quality, which ASUS is known for. Installing the ASUS RTX 3080 was exactly kind of what you'd expect in a case as big as the, as the Fantex NV7. I didn't have any space constraints, so just kind of went right in, slotted it into the top PCIe 5.0 X16 slot. However, this card can only take advantage of the PCIe 4.0 speeds. It's okay because the board is backwards compatible, so we don't have any issues there. I then connected the three 8-pin power cables from my power supply, which we will review in episode 8, and the card has an onboard circuit that monitors the, pow the power supply rail voltage and lights up a red LED if there's an issue, which is a very nice touch for troubleshooting. The ROG Strix features a triple fan Axial Tech cooler, providing excellent thermal headroom. The center fan spins in a reversed direction to reduce turbulence, and the heatsink underneath is massive, ensuring great cooling for the GA102 GPU and GDDR6X memory. It also has a stop fan feature, so the fans don't spin below 55 degrees Celsius, keeping things silent during light tasks. And the RGB lighting is very subtle, but customizable via, via the ASUS Armory Crate software, which I synced with the rest of my build. This card has a stock clock of 1440 megahertz with a boost clock of up to 1905 megahertz in OC mode. It packs 8,704 CUDA cores, 272 texture mapping units, or TMUs, and 96 render up output units, also known as RPs. Paired with the 10 gigs of GDDR6X memory on a 320-bit bus, it delivers 760 gigabytes of bandwidth. That's a huge upgrade over my 1080 Ti in terms of raw performance and efficiency. So let's see how it holds up in the real world test. I tested this card with games that I've been playing most recently, and this includes World of Warcraft, Red Dead Redemption 2, Dynasty Warriors Origins, and Assassin's Creed Shadows. All of these games have been running perfectly, hitting 100 FPS easily with properly adjusted settings for max clarity and visual fidelity. And it's only 100 frames because my monitor is a 100 hertz refresh rate monitor that I got. I'm not upgrading and spending that much money on a monitor. I'm perfectly content with my monitor. Thermals are impressive. Thanks to that massive cooler, after 30 minutes of gaming, the GPU peaked at about 63 degrees Celsius and the fan spinning about 1900 RPM, according to the specs, you know, the stuff within inside the computer. And it was producing no real noticeable noise, which was nice. I and mean, you can hear fans running, but it wasn't like an air blower going on. So I don't have the ability to test how much power draw it was, but I know my my 850 watt power supply can handle it just fine and still have plenty of headroom, especially without any overclocking happening. This ASUS ROG 3080 is built to last with premium alloy chokes, solid polymer capacitors, and a reinforced metal frame. While graphics cards are typically get you know upgraded every couple of years, uh, you can expect this card to handle 1440p uh, at least for five to seven years, I'd say. And the only thing that's a gripe about this card is it was a used card, so the mileage may vary. I know I'm not gonna be doing any high refresh rate gaming or overclocking, and with the proper cooling that this has, it's gonna give it the ability to last as long as possible. The only con I'd say I noticed about this card is that it's only using 10 gigs of memory, which that, you know, it can use it extremely well and be very efficient at it, but that can be a bottleneck in the future. A lot of titles, especially those that are not well optimized, will run into bandwidth problems at higher settings and resolutions. However, outside of gaming, this GPU will have no issues handling all my streaming and rendering, editing, recording needs 
for as long as I can tell. It will be able to do all of it flawlessly. There's also a ton of other features on the card that you can use with different, uh, what the NVIDIA Studio and all these different things that can kind of go into an honorable mention, but there's nothing that, it's just a card that needs to be efficient and do a lot of good things well that I'm doing. And so there's a lot of features out there that I'm personally not using that you might find useful. Also another honorable mention is this card can do some pretty good overclocking. I've done a little bit of research on it and it does have a robust 22 phase VRM and that massive cooler as we mentioned. Using the ASUS GPU Tweak 2 software, you saw that some users were able to get pretty high speeds and everything on the system, like up to 2,085 megahertz, say it's about a four to five percent performance bump. So that's kind of cool, but I don't overclock mine at all. Is this card right for you? I mean, I'd say anybody who can get their hands on one, really, this card is pretty good for. It is unfortunately dated because it released in late 2020 and now we're dealing with 2025, but it is still a fantastic card in general. You can't go wrong with this series of card if you're doing robust work, heavy editing, or extreme gaming. Just be careful of buying used as you can't always tell what it's been through. And without copying reviews from other people out there and everything, I can only recommend what I have experience with in relation to alternative cards. So if this is your first build, you definitely don't need an alternative such as a 5090 card or something like that. But any card I would recommend, you have at least 16 gigs of RAM. That should be a pretty decent all-rounder to get you where you need to be. And most games can run perfectly fine in a 1080p setting. You only start to have differing performance issues when you want to run a high refresh rate or high resolution gaming, or sometimes both. But through it all, I'd highly recommend ASUS branded cards with any graphics card that you would pick. But I love its performance, cooling, and build quality for me, making it a worthy upgrade over my 1080 Ti, and I especially love it since it was free. Next up is part eight, where I'll review my power supply. Don't miss it. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have, so leave them in the comments down below. If you find this review helpful, feel free to subscribe. Hitting that like button will help others see this as a helpful video as well. I'm on a journey to bring you the best PC building content, and I'd love for you to join me. Check out the full PC part shopping series in the playlist link below to see how I picked this GPU, even though it was free, so we kind of know that. Spoilers. Still, watch the video, please. This has been The Don with the Don Tech, and remember, the Don's got your back. Would you believe this is my first time doing this?